Thank you for choosing SPDSLS for your studies. Today, we're going to have a brief look on how to use your e-learning portal, how to log in, and how to access your resources and your virtual class through your portal. There are a couple of different ways how to access your portal. One is through the URL. The URL for your e-learning portal is elearning.spta.com.au. You will be prompted with the logon screen. To log in, please type in your e student email address, which will be provided in your welcome email from SPTA and Seller. So in my case, this is 49485 at sbta.com.au. Again, this number here will change for you. Then we press next. Next, enter your password. Your password will be your date of birth in eight digits. For example, if you are born on the 1st of the 1st, 1990, so 1st of January 1990, please type in 01011990. So I'm gonna type in password here. I just press sign in. After you log in for the first time, you will be prompted with our language, literacy, and numeracy test. You have to complete this test before you continue your studies. This is to assure that you have all the language, literacy and numeracy skills for the, available, for the course you are studying. Don't be alarmed. This doesn't mean that you can't study your course. This only means that we know that you have the required skills and if there are skills missing, we will give you extra support for your studies. Please then continue to the orientation by clicking the next button on the bottom of the page. So we're going to scroll down all the way to the bottom and then press continue to orientation. Once you have completed the orientation, we will ask you to double check your personal details. So please double check that your name is cor uh, spelled correctly. Your surname is spelled correctly. You have the correct email address and this is your private email address. So for example, hotmail.com. Do not put your student email address here. Please put your private email address here. Please double check your mobile number is correct here as well. Please remove all spaces between them. Then press next. After that, please double check your address and select the suburb you're living at. Then press next. Here, please provide an emergency contact. And then press next. Please provide your USI number. If you have studied any kind of vocational or higher educational course, you have already a USI number. To get your USI number or to create one, please click this link, Get USI. If you are an English student, please leave this blank. You do not need a USI number. If you have any questions regarding USI, you can contact us directly by phone or send an email to student services. If you want to know how to create a USI number, please click this link and it will redirect you to the video how to create USI. After you have provided your USI number, please click next. Please tick that box to agree that you have um, provided all the contact details uh, correctly and then press submit. Fantastic. So now we have finished all the orientation process. We are now prompted with our student portal. The first thing we see is our dashboard. On our dashboard, there's lots of information we can see already. One is your attendance. If you are an English student, you must maintain a 80% attendance. Here you can also see your balance. So if there's a balance of your tuition fee coming up in the future, it will be displayed here. You will also have a pay now button there. Here on the right, you also can see your current class and your current class details. So one, your um, class ID, your room that you assigned and the trainer. To access your virtual class, press virtual class button. 
This is a Microsoft Teams virtual class. To know more about the virtual class in Microsoft Teams, please watch the video on Microsoft Teams in our YouTube channel. To access your resources, please press the class resource button. If you click here, it will open a new tab. It will ask you to sign in again. And here you will have your student folder. And in here is everything you need to complete the assessment. Your learner guides, your PowerPoint presentation, and also your assessment tool itself. If you have any questions regarding your resources, please ask your trainer directly or send an email to studentservices at sbta.com. Let's jump back into the portal. You also have the option to chat directly with student services. If you click this chat, a Microsoft Teams chat will open. And if you have installed Microsoft Teams, it will ask you to open my Microsoft Teams app, or you can go directly into the web app of Microsoft Teams, which we are doing here right now. Here, you just can start typing what your questions are. Please be aware that the communication between you and your trainer will only be through your student email. So here you can access your student email to click the button. And here we go. It's a Microsoft Office Online 365 email. Let's jump back into the portal. The next row, what we can see here in our dashboard is our photo. If you have not taken a photo, please take a photo here. It is mandatory to take a photo of yourself. So you have to take a photo of your face. Please do not obstruct or do anything that would hide your identity. We do have to have a photo to verify your identity in class. Down here, you can see your name and your student ID. Here are your contact information. Please be aware that your contact information has to be up to date at any time. If you change any of these details, please update this within seven days. If you have not updated any of these details within seven days, and we are trying to contact you for one of those details, your visa may be at risk. So please try to keep this up to date at all time. If you're moving, please let us know. If you are changing your email address, please change your email address here. If you're changing your mobile number, please change your mobile number here. To change your contact information, press the edit contact details. Please change whatever needs to be changed. Declare that all those information are correct and up to date, and then press submit. In the academic tab, you can see your current enrollment. You can see your current course that you are studying. You can see this enrollment is current. Here you also can see my shift allocation, my start date of my course and my end date of my course. Here in this table below, you can see the class I'm currently studying. You can also see the class you have previously studied in this enrollment. Here you also can access your resources or your virtual class, not just from the current, but also from previous one. To upload your submission, you click the submission upload button. You have finished the assessment and you want to submit your assessment, you click here to upload. This will redirect you to our submission portal. You can then submit your assessment any additional files that support your assessment and any video files that you need to upload for, to support your assessment. In additional documents, I'm uploading any kind of document that supports our assessment. For example, you can upload PDF documents here, pictures, any kind of PowerPoint presentation, Excel spreadsheets, everything that is not in your assessment. So if I go into my assessment, uh, if I go here and choose your files, I just browse to my file and add anything that needs to be uploaded. Perfect. After this, I'm going to press next. Next is our video upload. Please upload all your practical evidence and videos here. So for example, if you have done a presentation, please upload the recorded video here. To choose your file, you go here and browse to the file location. We open it and we have here our video um, upload. After that, we press next. Next is the submission declaration. Please read through this declaration carefully, then agree to the submissions and press submit. 
depending on your internet speed and the file sizes. This may take a couple of minutes. So please do not close that window until this is done. You can see at the moment, everything is uploading. After the upload is finished, you can see here the 100%. You can go down and you can also see successfully uploaded. When you're done with your submission, you can then click return to home. Next is the invoice tab. The invoices tab shows you all the invoices for your enrollment. All the past ones which have been paid and all the future ones when they are due. Here I can see there's an invoice of $60 due today while I'm recording the video. Fantastic! So to pay this invoice, I can go up and can see here my balance is due today and I can pay now. This will redirect you to our payment portal. Here you can decide your payment method through PayPal, via credit card or direct deposit. Please see here our account details. Decide to go and pay through PayPal. It will prompt you with a pop-up video and you can log in to your PayPal account. You can also pay via debit or credit card. You can just click here, type in your card details, confirm and press pay now. You will then get a confirmation that this invoice has been paid. Please allow a couple of business days to process this payment in your portal. Okay, now back on our um, portal, you can see now, after a couple of days, my balance has been cleared. Please again, allow a couple of days for us to process the payment in our internal accounting system. If I go back to our invoices tab, press on my enrollment, you can see here as well, this invoice has now been paid. In the leave tab, you can see any kind of pre-booked leave or deferrals or any kind of leave that you have booked with student services. For more information on leave or deferrals, please contact student services at spda.com.au. This was a brief overview of the portal. If you have any technical issues or any kind of questions to the portal, please send an email to it at spda.com.eu. I hope that was informative for you and I thank you for watching.